Welcome friends, I am Professor Kusum Pawar, a faculty in the area of Human Resource Management associated with Durga Devi Saraf Institute of Management Studies. Today we are going to talk about the topic Talent Management. To begin with, the learning objectives that we are going to focus on are Understanding Talent Management and Global Scenario. This would be the first module. In the second module, we would be talking about integration of talent management with other functions. In the third module, we would focus on building sustainable leadership and futuristic talent management strategy. And finally, we would be talking about talent acquisition, engagement and retention. In the current module, we would be focusing on understanding talent management and citing a few examples of the global scenario. To begin with, let me quote uh, the words of uh, Mr. Narayan Murthy from Infosys. He said, our assets walk out of the workplace every night and our job is to ensure that they love coming back every morning. Now this is a challenge or an aspiration of every organization, of every manager. How to ensure that employees, they want to come back every day to work and they don't miss office and they enjoy working what they are assigned. So what is talent when I say talent management? The first thing is talent. What exactly is talent? You know, since our childhood, we keep listening to this person is more talented, the other one is probably less talented. So is it a relative term or is it an absolute term? First of all, let's focus on what exactly is talent. Talent is the sum of a person's natural ability to learn and grow. So. I may have a talent to dance well, I may have the talent to sing well, I may have the talent to look at problems and think of solutions pretty quickly. And how do we, and the important thing is everybody is talented in some or the other way. Organizations want specific talent to achieve specific goals and objectives and for that they have to manage the talent. So what is talent management? Talent management is the attraction of highly skilled, profitable and performing workers, integrating the new workers with the existing one, developing and retaining the current workers so that organization is able to meet the current and future business objective. And that's the job of an HR manager to continuously ensure that we are able to attract more talented people, we are able to develop them, we are able to retain and this is a continuous cycle that keeps running. So why, why is it important for an organization to pay attention to their talent management? One is it helps us create strategic recruitment plans so that we would be able to attract the best of talent. Another objective or another benefit of talent management is that we are able to identify and develop leaders at all levels leaders who are going to inspire, motivate the workers to achieve the goals. Next objective that talent management fulfills is creating great, great places to work. When an organization is considered to be a great place to work, more and more employees would want to join the organization. It becomes dream organization. How many of you have dream of working with Google, with IBM, to name a few. Another objective which talent management fulfills is it directs the positive energy of people to the right. It's very important that the energy is channelized properly so that it is used in the constructive way and not in the destructive way. The next is let's have a look at the, ta the talent management entire process from a bird's eye view. Talent management starts with talent acquisition wherein we try and find the right people, fitment. Talent identification wherein we evaluate and understand the existing talent that we have. Moving on to talent development wherein we invest in people and nurture their growth. And finally talent deployment wherein we get people ready to hold the key positions because that's how the growth trajectory is going to be. Right, so once again, talent acquisition, talent identification, talent development, and talent deployment. 
Today, uh, our focus is going to be on creating a talent management model for organizational excellence. Excellence is what we all are striving for. Organizations want to excel in what they are doing. And this would be supported and substantiated by the talented people that you have. Googlers make Google. You know, IBM employees make what IBM is. Infosys employees make what Infosys is all about. So it's the employees who make an organization, it's the employee who, who make an organization excellent, good or not so good. So let's focus on the talent management model. What do the successful organizations do? One thing that is there in a very successful organization and excellent organization is that they are proactive and they are systematic. They are proactive and systematic in taking the actions to ensure that their human resource cap capabilities are able to fulfill the current and future business requirements. So the three underlying elements of this talent management model are creating a crate, having a proper talent management strategy in place and to have a system which would help you ex exercise this strategy, implement the strategy and create a talent creed. To begin with, what is a creed? What is a talent creed? Talent creed is you know, a cohesiveness between the core principle, values, mutual expectations, sustainability, social responsibility, ethical behavior, innovation and creativity. All these competencies shared by the employees of an organization. That creates a creed. We know organizations like TCS because of its employees. The employees share these principles, share the corporate values, they have similar expectations or at least their expectations are aligned to the organizational expectation and the employee expectations are aligned to one another. They are socially responsible, they understand what they are expected to do in the organization and they believe in the, uh, you know, the ethical behavior, they have the mindset for innovation and they continuously you know, think of creativity, creating better results by exercising creative processes. To give you an example of talent creed, let's talk about Johnson and Johnson. According to them, they have created a credo and this picture here shows, I mean, there's a wall that they have put up which talks about what the credo is all about. In nutshell, they believe that the credo is their moral compass which prevents them from digressing. Organi the organization has, you know, clearly explained to the employees, the employees have clearly understood how they are supposed to behave, what is expected out of them, what they have to do to make the organization an excellent organization, so they know what exactly their roles are. So the role clarity is very much there and they know what is the recipe for business success. Two things are very important for an organization, one is profitability and second is sustainability. For this, your employees are going to be the driver force and these wonderful organizations like Johnson & Johnson's have realized this and they are spending a lot of time in communicating this to their employees. Another example which we can think of is of Starbucks. Now how many of you have gone to a Starbucks cafe? You know in Mumbai in, in, uh, you must have seen that in the last five six years many Starbucks cafe you know have been you know this, these outlets have opened and each each outlet that you go to, you experience the same kind of environment, the customer service, the way they treat their customers, the way they prepare a, you know, ca you know, a coffee, a, a, you know, or maybe a latte or a cappuccino, it's the same. Why is it the same? Because all these employees in Starbucks who are actually called partners, they are guided by certain principles. Those principles you can see here. They imbibe these principles and they live these principles day in, day out. One is provide a great work environment and treat each other with respect and dignity. All employees respect one, each other, they respect their customers, they respect their stakeholders. They have embraced diversity and they know that diversity is really an essential comp component to achieve excellence because diverse ideas would come and that lead to innovation and creativity. They also focus on higher standards of excellence to pur purchasing, roasting and fresh delivery of coffee. They enthusiastically serve their customers and for them customers are really important. 
they want to contribute positively to the communities and to the environment recognize that profitability is the essential core to their business success topic that we are going to talk about is oh, we have already spoken about creed and we've given example of johnsons and johnsons and starbucks next is talent management strategy you know, we understand in the model it's important to create a creed the next important uh, aspect to look at is having a proper talent management strategy in place now what is a talent management strategy is basically the type of investment the organization is going to make today in people who they believe are going to help achieve competitive excellence in the future now the talent management strategy should view the workforce as a portfolio of human resource differentiated based on assessment of each person's current and potential contribution to organization success people perform well at a current level but do they have the potential to move on to the next level and that's how the leadership pipeline also is created so as an organization i should have this clarity of portfolio where my employees are at present where how do i want to move them how much time would they take from to moving from current position to the future position what all interventions i have to build into the system to ensure that this growth and this movement from the current to the future position happens all this would be a part of talent management strategy and hence the directives the few directives for talent management strategy is one that we have to cultivate our super keepers i would be talking about who the super keepers are you have to cultivate them and for that first you have to identify who your super keepers are second very important thing or the directive is to retain key position backups each organization has certain positions which are key to its existence and for those positions proper backup plan should be there and finally appropriately allocating treads treads stands for training rewards education assignment and development and we'll talk about each of these three directives in detail so start with cultivate super keepers super keepers are a very small group of individuals in the organization roughly about 2 to 3% of the organization's employee base they are the ones who demonstrate superior accomplishment who embody the creed they are they are the face and voice of the creed they lead the creed they have the core competencies for their roles they value their organization plus there is a fitment so their personal value system and the organization value system is is coinciding or is collaborating so how do you identify these super keepers once you have identified them in the re recruitment process how do you select them how do you develop them and what kind of strategies do you adopt to retain them because they are the ones who are rowing your boat bill gates in words of bill gates he believes that if you take out 20 best people away from their company the company would not be the same and it would become an unimportant company so it's these 2 to 3% of the employees who make the company what it is all about they are the ones who are exceeding the expectations in the current position and are expected to do so in the future positions also the second directive is retain key position backup as a thumb rule any organization should not have more than 20% of their jobs as key all our jobs cannot be key positions there has to be some of the positions some of the jobs that are key to the existence of the organization gaps in these key positions replacement activity may lead to huge costs distraction of the organization probably loss of some customers and loss of opportunities and it would be disruptive for the growth journey of the organization and none of the organizations want to do that so if i am an organization i would be ready with the backup for my key positions the next directive is so how do you decide what is uh, how the which of the position is going to be the key position one is immediacy how quickly do you want to fill the position can you let the position remain vacant for a long duration if not then it's a key position uniqueness how unique is the talent how unique is the competencies of the job incumbent for example 
position of an actuary with insurance company is a unique position. Very few actuaries are available in the country today in India. So, this is a unique position and this position is also having a strategic impact on your organization because it is the actuary who is going to decide the mortality rate, what should be the premium charge and so and so forth. Demand, you know, if you look at uh, some of the Eastern European countries, demand for technical staff or engineers is huge and the supply is short. So, some of the key positions probably of the operations manager there, the operations vice president there, they should have key position backup because if one person leaves, if a key position incumbent leaves, then the organization would be having a, you know a chance of or a possibility of a certain opportunity loss and we do not want to do that as an organization. So, these are the four criteria based on which you can decide whether the position is considered to be a key position or not. Next is the third directive is how to allocate TREADS appropriately. I have already shared with you TREADS stands for training, rewards, education, assignment and development activities and organizations make huge investments in these forms of and that is how they try to develop the employees. So, to classify you know the organization should classify the employee base for investment purpose in trades. So, how would we classify the employees? One is the level of performance and the competencies that they have, leadership and development of others, how they have helped the other members of the team develop and improve on their leadership skills their position and role models for the organization's creed. Are they the face and voice of the creed? Are they acting as a role model for the current and the future employees? These are the three uh, classification bases on which you can decide how to make an investment in terms of threads. Classification of threads, we have been talking about super keeper and how you have to cultivate super keeper and how to identify super keepers and why they should be treated differently. So, who are super keepers in an organization as we said that 2 to 3 percent of the employees only are the super keepers and in an organization. Super keepers are the employees who greatly exceed expectation in current role and are projected to do the same in their future capacities. Keepers. Keepers are the employees who exceed expectations now and are expected to do so in future as well. Then we have a category called solid citizens, they are the ones who meet expectations. And then we have another category of misfits, employees who perform below expectation. They also form 2 percent of the employee base, but they are the ones who are trying to sink your boat. So, the key learning is Poor allocation of threads between the, these uh, classifications of employees may lead to unwanted turnover, more your morale of employees may go down, the performance may get affected and an organization as an HR manager you would not want that to happen. So, what do you do to prevent this from happening? What you need to do is you need to ensure that you classify the employees properly and you ensure that the investment in these employees or the allocation of threads happen with a lot of thought process going into it. Moving ahead, let us just have an example of how threads should be allocated by employee classification. If you look at it for super keepers which constitute 3 percent of the employee distribution, as far as their compensation is concerned, you need to accelerate their pay packages faster than the pay market. In training and development, you have to make major investments in them. The career path of such employees also should be very rapid. The visibility should be very high in terms of their recognition. So, you need to recognize them at different platforms. And the resource allocation, best companies allocate 5 percent of their resources into super keepers. Another classification keepers who roughly constitute 20 percent of an employee base in an organization. Again, their compensation also should accelerate faster than pay markets. In terms of TND, you need to make substantial investment into them. Career path should be rapid, visibility should be high recognition, and the resource allocation at best of the companies is about 25 percent. 
solid citizens they are the ones who are the loyal employees of your organizations who are continuously meeting the expectations they are also an important lot and the distribution or their uh, they they constitute around 25% of the employee base so how do you in terms of compensation you have to accelerate moderately until their competitive level is reached in terms of training and development investment only to enhance competencies for current and future business situations career path would be moderate to none that would be the continuum that it will follow visibility you need to recognize them at appropriate platform but not very high recognition probably and resource allocation 68% because they are also contrary constituting 75% of your employee base therefore resource allocation is higher the a very very critical uh, employee classification is the misfits you know during one of the world at work conferences the keynote speaker kurt kaufman asked the uh, the ceos who were present there as to how much time do they take to identify a keeper and the majority of them answered that they take around 1 month to identify or locate a keeper and then he asked them how much time do you uh, take to identify and how much time do you take to to remove a misfit from your organization or to chuck that person out and they say it takes around 10 years you know organizations are actually creating a very positive system for these misfits to stay in the organization and they are the ones who are sinking your boat so you should know when is the time to let an employee go because you are not only doing a disservice to yourself as an organization as an as a function hr function but it is also equally unfortunate for the employee because there is a misfit if, clearly the employee probably the role, it, it doesn't match with the role then in that case change the role and if the employee is a, is a misfit in the organization a person organization misfit is there then it's in the best interest of the company as well as the employee to move on and therefore these difficult decisions should be taken and should be taken in good time next is about the talent management system so so far we have spoken about talent creed we have spoken about a talent strategy now once you have created a creed and you have a strategy in mind you need to implement that and for implementing this strategy the procedures and processes that would translate this creed and strategy into a diagnostic and an implementable program is what the talent management system is all about and this talent management system ideally should consist of four components they are you need to have proper assessment tools in place use multi rater assessment have diagnostic tools in place and ensure that the monitoring process is in place to talk about the assessment tools competency assessment and for that first of all you have to identify the competencies required for each role competency mapping is very very important and so is the assessment of competencies and therefore you need to have competent people to be able to assess the competencies required next is performance assessment how frequently do you want this performance assessment to happen is it going to be a continuous feedback mechanism whereby employees just don't get to know about their performance at the end of the performance cycle or do they get to know about it on a regular basis how many of you would like to work with a supervisor who only comes and meets you during the meetings which are like a quarterly meeting or something and towards the end of the performance cycle and comes and hands you the rating and says okay you've got a rating 2 or a 4 or a 5 rating depending on the, the structure of the performance appraisal i hope the answer is that you would want to work with a supervisor who keeps giving you continuous feedback of whether you are moving in the right direction or not somebody who tells you okay this is what you have done right and you continue to do this or this is how you need to improve on a certain vector so that i continuously keep improving and at the end my rating should not come as a surprise to me if you look at it employees join organizations and they leave managers and as a manager it's our responsibility to ensure that this performance feedback is given to the employees on a regular basis and not necessarily at the end of performance cycle potential forecast now today i am performing well at a certain level but do i have the potential to move on to the next level 
what am I supposed to do? What kind of development inputs do I need to put in from my own side? What do I expect from the organization so that I am a high potential candidate and not only a high performing candidate? There has to be a sync between high performance and high potential. So potential forecast, what is the employee base that you have right now and whether or not they have the potential to occupy the future requirements. Next is measurement scales for performance and potential. You need to have very clearly defined measurement scales which are even made clear to the, clear to the employees. As a student, if I do not know how I am getting an A or a B rating, what do I need to do? How many marks do I need to score in each component of assessment? If I do not know that and how I am going to be evaluated, if I do not do that, know that then I would not be able to improve my performance or increase my potential and therefore as an organization also it is very imperative that the employees know what these measurement scales are and they need to be very very clearly defined for the person who is going to run this system and also for the person who is going to be assessed through these systems. And finally, succession and career planning. Succession is how I am going to create a pipeline so that my key positions always remain full. I do not have a void, a gap. So how I am going to you know, fill the vacancy of a certain position by using the resources that I already have in the organization. How am I going to move employees from one level to another? As an employee moves out because of retirement or some other reason, do I have I identify another potential incumbent for that position, succession planning and as an individual also employees have decided how they want to grow in the organization and that is their career plan. This should be very clearly defined and there has to be an integration between the succession planning and career planning. Next we move on to multi rated assessment in order to have an objective feedback and to remove any kind of biases or preconceived notions or any performance rating error, multi rater assessment system should be followed in which employees do a self review first and then the supervisor rates them, then the supervisor supervisor which is a skip level review and finally the HR looks at the assessment and freezes it. To move on diagnostic tools are very very important because they are the analytical devices the organization uses to convert the assessment of the people into a talent management plan. So we get some results from the, from the analytical tools and those, to, those results should be converted into a concrete plan and the core diagnostic tools would be to have a super keeper reservoir, you know have good number of people who are going to move from solid citizens to keeper from keeper to super keeper. So have a reservoir with you. Key position backups very important identify the key positions and then create backup for them. Surpluses most of the organizations IT organizations like TCS, Deloitte and all they have surpluses they have huge bench strength because they cannot, ex cannot, cannot afford to have the opportunity loss in terms of not being able to serve a client because of lack of manpower. Voids identify where the gaps are existing and how to fill them. Blockages at times some employees they block the career path or career progression of the employees working in the in the you know in the hierarchy below them. So how do you ensure that these blockages are removed? I want to become a vice president but there is a there is a person who has been there at a vice president level of HR for a very long time and probably not adding a lot of value to the profile. So how do the organization or how as an HR department I ensure that these blockages do not remain for a very long time in the system. Problem employees, the employees who are response to job satisfaction level is destructive. They are creating a negative environment in the organization, they are creating issues for the organizations. How do I identify them? What are the remedial measures that I want to put in place for these problem employees? very critical for an organization and ultimately threads allocation. How do we allocate thread? How do we spend? Who do we spend more on? And how frequently do we do that? And how do we communicate to, to the employee? To move on, it's very important to monitor the process. You know, you have devised a strategy, you have created a creed, the system is in place, you have the diagnostic tools in place very important is to monitor the process to control the output. So the four broad measures that you may use to monitor the process are quality, 
timeliness, credibility and impact. The process should be driven by quality, so it should be able to meet the specific standards. Timeliness, it should be completed in the stipulated time. Credibility, especially for the employees. Employees should find it credible and it should be achievable for them and impact. I have had a great strategy in place, a system in place, but if I am not able to create a creed, then the impact is not going to be there. If I have created a creed, is the creation of creed meeting my strategy? Am I able to achieve my organization's objectives and goals? Is my organization profitable? Is my organization an excellent organization? Do I see sustainability in offering? These are few of the questions that you must ask before you create this talent management model. With this, we end the first module wherein we have spoken about talent management and the talent management model, creed, strategy and system. In the next part, we would be talking about leadership and how we have to integrate the talent management function with other functions in the HR domain. Thank you.